appreciate very much having you here tonight. I think it might be helpful. How long have you been a Pittsburgh policeman? I'm in my 23rd year in serving as on the Pittsburgh Police And how long as head of the FOP? I'm in my 12th year, my sixth consecutive term in serving in that. Now, you saw the background tape as we did, and you heard our conversation. I think Eileen has the first question. I wondered, you know, based on your experience and, and your many long years, what leads policemen to react in a violent fashion in crowd situations like that? Well, I question saying they acted violent in this situation, but first planning and readiness for any type of an affair is necessary when you have a large gathering of people. And in the case of the Civic Arena, there was mismanagement. What, kind, what kind of planning and readiness are you talking about? What would have been more appropriate? Well, I think more police officers to scene, uh, meeting with the Civic Arena officials to make sure those people who had tickets got in quicker and faster, not just have three entrances for people when you're talking 17,000 people. Open up the Civic Arena a lot earlier for these shows, these concerts, a half hour before showtime makes it very hard in law enforcement on the outside of Civic Arena to separate those people who do not have tickets to get into an affair that was sold out. Now what happens when the show starts, the people hear the music inside and you have a clash for the doors. And that's a problem that Civic Arena must look into and it could help in matters like this when you have a, a concert that's sold out and there's no, no tickets around for the public to buy. Um, on the tape we could see that you were one of the officers who was leading the young man into the van when the policeman with the motorcycle helmet struck him. Um, and I believe you're being investigated. Their police administrators are asking why you did not uh, write up the man for, or cite him. Uh, could you tell us why you didn't? Well, let me say uh, no police administrator has asked me that question. And nobody has come to me in any way, shape, or form over this matter. I think that the individual uh, uh, was being put into the wagon. He resisted with the officer on the right. It happened quick, uh, and uh, it seems that the city went ahead and started talking to trial board in this matter uh, before any investigation was conducted. I think the rather record has to be put straight. Every incident doesn't require trial board action. They can suspend, but it seems they want to talk trial board before they did any investigation in this matter. And when I was talking to the chief of police on one talk show, uh, the Morning Post-Gazette had the officer already charged and the chief didn't know. So there is problems within the Department of Public Safety in handling the investigative matters when the public thinks there's been some type of uh, excessive force used by police officers. And they have to sit down and, and investigate the problems right before they start talking about charging and trying to build this again towards the trial board like the trial board's not working in the city of Pittsburgh. Many officers have faced suspensions in this city of Pittsburgh and have taken them without a trial board. But th they blew this out of proportion. What happened at the Civic Arena, I think a further investigation will show uh, that it didn't require Let all the... Let me ask you right. something, though, before, before we get talking more about the trial board. One thing that sort of intrigues me, now, obviously I wasn't there, I was just watching, but it seemed to me that what this guy was, he said something. And, and I wondered, you know, is it... Do you have any sense that, that, that people, policemen, just naturally react when somebody sort of mouths off? I think, John, in this case, uh, this officer has been charged. But I think when the day of the testimony comes, which I must protect that now because of subpoena right. actions, you will see it may be more than verbal confrontation when the evidence comes out in this matter. That is, it's something that, be, that was not visible uh, in the pictures, is that's, that right? That's correct. But, but let me just ask you a question. I mean, I can tell you from personal experience, we get, I mean, over in my 12 years here in town, the kind of things that would seem to me to occur where policemen seem to get in trouble or seem to overreact is not some real violent, you know, big fist fight or something, but it's basically when somebody, they think somebody's being smart to them, talking back to them. And, and do, you, do you have any sense that that's true? Well, you hear some complaints at times, you know, reading your letter sent into the uh, Posky set, the editorial page. And John, those cases there can be corrected through sensitivity training in the police academy, if they exist. And you have to have that type of training continuously. I think we're all humans, and when they're confrontation, I see many people when they're traveling in traffic and giving one another the fingers for a bumper or cutting one another. So we all have a reaction like that. But a law enforcement officer, a little more is expected of him to control himself emotionally. And training helps you. Uh, 
And even if you have training, sometimes you still can't control the situation. Is there but any working together. Like that yeah. now? Is, it in, is it ongoing? Yes, they're starting the training. Uh, we're starting to move uh, through the Training Act that was pushed by the Fraternal Order of Police in Harrisburg. We want more in-service training to bring our people and show the reactions, show them liability factors they can face for this type of conduct. And as you know, in, in, there was many shootings in years gone by in police departments, and we have trained our officers, keep training them when to shoot and when not to shoot. And training does it. But we can't have people acting in a capacity of public safety and we want to blame everything on a trial board. But good, strong training, progressive training, continuous training can avert a lot of this type of uh, conduct we hear of people complaining for small arrests. Disorderly conduct seems to be where the confrontation comes in. Not the felony arrests, but the little stop traffic stops on the street. This and training. It's sensitive training, I call it. And certainly, I welcome that all times. And that, that, that is needed in the police department. We need more type of training like that. We do it now for things like ethnic intimidation. We have moved in that direction. And I think the training of police officers have come a long way in the fa past few years compared to they were back in the 50s and the is, 60s. Is this sensitivity training going to be something that you take at the academy when you're a cadet, or is it going to be uh, something that they give you as a, a refresher course every from Both. time to time? There's two classifications. There's a recruit training, which takes four to five months. We just extended that training through state law. And the other training I'm referring to would be called in-service training. Police officers are already past the recruit stage and past the probationary period every year or every two years just to keep you refreshed and what you can face in the street, the suddenness, the attacks, how to handle them, just like you protect yourself if there's guns involved. And I think we need more of that sensitivity training in dealing with these issues and to handle them to give us a better public relations with the people in the street. Back to the trial board and the discipline problem, if, if I may touch on that. And this, uh, I know you're under subpoena because of the trial board incident, and uh, but generally you're a lieutenant and you're in a supervisory position out on the street, you're also the president of the union. Uh, do you ever have, uh, have you ever had a conflict uh, or a problem in writing someone up for a disciplinary violation? Does it enter in your, into your mind that, uh, uh, look, I'm president of the union, I better watch myself, this is one of my union brothers? Let me tell you, I think the education I receive as president of the fraternal or police in the city for 12 years, no book can write. It's a great experience in how to handle discipline officers, how to talk to them, how to deal with them privately. Every time an officer is in trouble, it doesn't have to be in a newspaper. It doesn't have to be in public print. And one of the things I notice in discipline in the whole city of Pittsburgh, there's many employees fired, civilian employees, never know, notice in a newspaper. Many of those cases are appealed and the city loses them all. In trial board actions, there's never been a case that I can recall where an officer was fired or dismissed and reversed by any court. We have an appeals board in this city uh, made up of uh, three people, one appointed by city council, one by the controller's office, and one by the mayor. The mayor's office is totally against the appeals board, which is a home rule charter. Now, we have commanders who have went to there, and their punishment was reduced, and the city's taken that to court. What I find in dealing with a lot of problems with the city especially in arbitration. They're appealing every one. Every one they lose, they keep appealing it. Uh, the Civil Service Commission, I've been up there and watched many uh, disciplinary problems. They're all appointed by the mayor. There's not a fair shake. I would like to see someday the Civil Service Commission be changed, that the one be appointed by the controller's office, one by city council, one by mayor. I see many, many problems. But when I sit down with police officers, and many of them take, accept suspensions prior to any trial board, and then someone turns around and puts their name in a newspaper. I think disciplinary problems that are not public reaction problems or inside of, should not be news items to protect. I think there's grounds you can say to officer, if you take so many days after two years, your record's clear. I try to sit down with the city to do collective bargaining in these matters, and they don't want to meet with you. Eileen, you've heard this. So do you think that's convincing in terms of not why we shouldn't have in Pittsburgh what they have in Detroit, separating the officers away from the, the enlisted men? Uh, it, 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 it would seem to me on the face of it, I mean, I've even thought that at the Post-Gazette. I think assistant city editors ought to be, have their own union as opposed, to, uh, as, as opposed to being part of the union that all the reporters are part of because we have separate interests. And it would seem to me that that might also be the case with any kind of middle management uh, where you're kind of sandwiched between, you know, the rye bread at the top and the white bread at the bottom, you know? Well, probably from a, a, a person lacking police experience, you might see the picture that way. I think we're blessed here in the city of Pittsburgh to this fact. The Fraternal Order Police was born here. It's the first birthplace of the Fraternal Order Police. 
and back in 1915, the first organization stepped forward in looking at the rights of police officers being violated, and the organization spread across the United States. This is the birthplace of the FOP, just like the CIO, and we were labor front. We saw these problems, and we went out seeing the political uh, people in the with police officers making the arrest. We went out to get the protection. And I see many cases across the United States where police are outright fired. They don't have these protections. Yeah, but that's not the issue. I mean, the, the issue isn't whether they're being fired or protected. The is, issue is, is, it, is, is, in a sense, how you manage a large, complicated organization. Okay. And, it, and, and you have a large number of people who are out on the beat, in cars, directing traffic. They've got a whole supervisory class, of which you are part. And you are responsible for managing these people's work. The question is whether or not part of your job of managing them requires some occasion to discipline them. And, it, and it, if you are, in a sense, for all practical purposes, they're equal, you, can you really discipline them? Yes, you can discipline them. I have done discipline. You, you look at the, the violation that they violated, the rule or regulation, I should say. You bring them and you talk to them. Right. I have no problem. I'm able to sit down with officers, and I'm able to correct their disciplinary problem, and so are many other lieutenants and many other stars. I think we've got to look at our police department. They have commanders now. Isn't it very strange that there's no setup of how you become a commander? They've taken patrolmen who've never been sergeants and never been lieutenants and made them commander in the past three well, years. Well, we do the same thing with editors. I mean, as we take now, people who... And, uh, if we talk about discipline, how do you discipline a patrolman that tomorrow may be your boss that was never a sergeant and never a lieutenant? I think we have to look at management in the Department of Public Safety. Yeah, and I wasn't, we aren't talking necessarily just about discipline. I'm just talking about how you run it. Because it's also true, is it not, that from your point of view, the, the, your superiors are the enemy. I mean, that is, this is, this is from Cannon Mac, uh, and Pampino. They're, you know, they're, it's us and them. I don't find that uh, working with the chief of police. I don't look upon Glenn Cannon as being an enemy. I certainly think I can look upon Glenn Cannon as lacking police experience and police training. Did he ever do a good thing from your point of view? Did Glenn Cannon ever do a thing? I think that uh, I can't really be pacific when he's done good or bad. I don't look at it that. But I think when I look at them the way of, uh, they formed the Department of Public Safety and didn't include their own chief of police and their own uh, chief of the fire department, uh, you can see there's an anti uh, police coming out of the city administration, but I've sat down and communicated with them. I praised them when I see some things. Uh, I've been on the forefront when they uh, tried to raise tickets. I went and talked to them. I, I'm against raising parking meter tickets. When they went to raise the burglar alarm system, they have not enforced in this city in the past two years. I have tried to sit privately with them and, and settle things in the house. And there's many things I've settled. Uh, police officers having problems or uh, getting them off on retirement that I've done much in-house with them. What I find in the last three years is the communication on disciplinary problems is not being done, but the focus of the public safety director is trying to throw everything into a trial board. I even have cases where the chief of police recommended a reprimand, the assistant chief reprimand, a reprimand. He would turn both of them and said, trial board, or I want five days. Uh, this is the type of problem that's going on inside the public. Six people are deciding a disciplinary problem against a police officer. If the sergeant says two days, by the time it goes up to the chain of command, they're playing with it eight days, ten days. That's telling Sergeant Lieutenant, don't no longer discipline. They're overriding what you're trying to do when you're dealing with these officers. Public Safety Department is three years old, as you say, and it's a mayoral election year, and some of the candidates are talking about perhaps getting rid of it. What would you like to uh, get rid of the Public Safety Department, or do you think you can work with it? I think it can, you can always have a Department of Public Safety and you can have a public safety director or a coordinator if you have big high types of events, explosion or something like that needs a coordination factor. I think what we've had in the Department of Public Safety, they formed another branch and they're also an administrative branch, taking records away from the police chief. He doesn't have his own crime statistics. I tried to get crime statistics for 1987. They finally come out with the book after many uh, months of talking to them, asking for it, the public asking for it. Uh, we don't need a department administration. You need a police, the fire, and the medics being run by their department head and dealing with a public safety. Not that other step in between a deputy director, administration. So this branch. sounds like a, a civilian police problem, the way you're putting it. Well, I think and anybody, everybody's starting to reckon. I think you hear all the candidates just about running for mayor seriously looking 
of that reorganization of the Public Safety Department. Yeah, but in the federal government, Pat, we have a civilian commander of the military, which sometimes has a police function, and you know, and, and in the city, I mean, that's part of part of what our constitution has been like in, in our federal constitution, and certainly our, our state constitution. I think would mandate that you would want to have a civilian head of of of, pu of public safety of the police, and and what I'm wondering is. You know, does it really make sense that, that the law governing discipline of police in Pittsburgh is made by legislators in Elk, Adams, and Juniata County? I mean, doesn't that, in a sense, make of the police department, doesn't it give it a hint of something almost like an occupying force? I think we're all members of the Commonwealth, and the legislature not only make the, the law for the trial board, they make many, many other laws. That's what we vote for them. And I think that's the right, because we may not only be the second-class city we are today, we could very well become a second class A city with the next census report. So you, what this trial board is not just Pittsburgh, it's really defined for the second class city. Just like other uh, townships have their set up, boroughs and townships, uh, third class cities. Uh, the legislators looked at this, they saw the treatment of police officers, and they continue are going to look at it from the city going up there. And I will tell you, there will be plenty of evidence to show the trial board works in this city. We've got to, so I think job. we're going to have to stop this now, but I think in summer you could just say yes, but you, you're satisfied with the present system? Yes, I'm satisfied with the present system. The evidence will show it works. Okay, well, I think on that I want to thank you very much for taking the time. Eileen, Carl, thank you, and thank you. We're going to see you next week, and we're going to talk a little bit more about this subject and other things with Glenn Cannon, the Director of Public Safety. Good night.